My dear friends, I like to dwell on conscience. You know, one of the important aspects in life is conscience. Because contrary to the popular belief, we always say conscience is not always from God. Why? Because it's not always from God to man. It can either be good or bad guide. So conscience can be good or bad guide. So don't take that this is God's conscience coming to me. No. Conscience can sway or even move from good to bad. But it can serve as a warning system for man. For each one of us, it can be a warning system. Hey, see, your conscience is telling you don't do this. Like a physical pain because something has happened in the body. We know I am having this pain because of something. Similarly, conscience will also prick you to tell that this is what is happening to your soul. Therefore, conscience can be a kind of warn of a damaged part of your soul. We shall, in a way, look at that aspect. Why? Because, you know, many people, conscience is dead. How a conscience can become dead? I'll tell you what happened in my own life story. You know, when I was a young priest, I had the habit of having some dry fruit nuts in one bottle kept on my table. And whenever I come inside the room, I put two nuts in my mouth. And then when I'm going out, I put my hand into the bottle and take another few nuts, put it in my mouth, and then walk out of my room. This was a quite a common thing, and I loved it. But sometimes, when I'm going out of my room, I put two or three nuts in my mouth, I chew them, and immediately, within another five or ten minutes, I go to celebrate Mass in the evening or in the morning. And when I go and celebrate Mass in the evening or morning, after chewing these few nuts, then when I go and celebrate my Mass, and then I get choked. Because some few nuts here and there inside my mouth remaining and it goes into my gullet. And then I start coughing. And when I start coughing and clearing my throat, after the mass, somebody comes and says, Father, you got cold, Father. I think you're suffering with severe cold and cough. I say, yeah, 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 you know, yes, yes, I think, I think. And it happens quite often. Every time when I come out of my room, I just put few nuts. And I know that is the mistake that I am doing and I'm coughing in the mass. Slowly, I've forgotten about that. And I realize that I should stop this. If I stop this, surely my mass would be very smooth without any interruption or any cough. But I was least parted. My conscience was dead. But later on, I came to know that this is wrong. Therefore, I gave up having a bottle of dry fruit nuts and all in that and putting it whenever I come out or come inside the room. Conscience can die. And when it is dead, your soul is dead. Therefore, there are seven important kinds of conscience that the Bible tells us biblically. The first one is an evil conscience because we see in the letter to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22, it very clearly says that evil conscience is there. This evil conscience will make us in a way feel I am in such a state. The second one is a conscience, convicted conscience. That's what in the letter to Romans we find in chapter 2 verse 14. This is a convicted conscience because I am in a way convicted in that part. And therefore my conscience pricks. The third conscience that we see is the purged conscience. In a way I have purged all my conscience. And I realize this is the reason why I am not able to hold on to things in my life. But it is important for you to know that purging conscience, which we see in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 4, it very clearly tells us. And then we come to the fourth conscience, that is the 
pure conscience. This pure conscience is what you and I should desire for and cultivate it in our lives. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 9, it very clearly tells what is a pure conscience. A pure conscience will clearly tell this is from God. Therefore, you will hear the voice of God through pure conscience only. The fifth aspect is a weak conscience. A weak conscience is like what happened to me. I was eating those nuts. I was not bothered. It was a weak conscience. But the stronger aspect is I can give up this weakness. And therefore, you find that weak conscience in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10. How important this conscience is. That don't give up on your weaknesses. Rather, you clear yourself. Right? Then, the sixth aspect is a good conscience. A good conscience is good. You have a very good conscience. In a way, we see what Peter tells in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 and 16. It very clearly says, a good conscience will make you flourish in your spiritual life. You will be a good guide. You will be a good counseling person. Because you have that conscience. A good conscience. Yes, I must do good. And the last one is a conscience. Avoid of offense. Conscience that avoids offense. Because I like to create offense. I like to do something that can offend someone. Therefore, you need to be aware that conscience avoid offense. As we see in Acts of the Apostle. Chapter 24, verse 16, very beautifully says how we can in a way sometimes avoid. This is the most important aspect. Because, my dear friends, what happens is we often are guided by our conscience. And when we are guided by our conscience, we also look at people around us. What happens? Yes. I see my mom is like this. I see my dad is like this. If they are doing this like that, nothing wrong for me in doing the same. Similarly, if my superior is doing that, oh, my superior is doing like that, why can't I do? And therefore, I get an escape ticket. My conscience slowly dies. Sometimes even the other way also, that you are supposed to be good. You are a unique person for God. And God expects that you can do much better in life. And therefore he has put you in this world. Which means you are a precious gift for God. Now your conscience is also important there. You should not say, no, no, you are a good person. I know you will not do this. But others are doing now, why can't I do? This is a terrible conscience that is prevailing today in the world. The secular world that we live in makes us feel so terrible that because others are doing it, why can't I do? And when you are with a good person, a good company, a man with nice uh, virtues in his life, then he will say, come on, I know you are a good person. But what about me? I can do whatever I like. Conscience slowly dies off. My dear friends, the Holy Spirit is that which gives you this beautiful gift. May you always be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that you may have a pure conscience, a good conscience. Finally, a well-informed conscience is what is important for you. A well-informed conscience will happen when you are strong, connected with God. Everything that you have learned in your childhood, all your parents have taught you, goes into your subconscious level. And one day it will come out to make you a better person. That is why we have charism for the little children. That is why we have children's instruction. One of the reasons why church encourages infant baptism is because what goes into the subconscious level happens later on. God bless you. Have a pure and good conscience.